<laughs> Didn't see you there. <laughs> Hi, Marnies. My name is Taylor Mongardi, your plus size black Barbie, and welcome to my makeup tutorial. Original concepts, my mind, my mind. So, to be perfectly clear, like, by no stretch of the memes, do I consider myself a makeup artist? And so, I guess I'm making a makeup tutorial because. I think because makeup is such a journey for everyone and like I think about when my makeup was say a year ago and I'm like ring, 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 ring. So not only would it be gorgeous to have like a video documentation of my growth and my process but also this is a two way street love so like if you like what I'm doing and you want to ask any questions pop off in the comments but if you think what I'm doing is busted then pop off in the comments be like love that needs blending that shade's wrong cackity cackity cack and let's pop off together. So let me just pop into a garment that I don't mind soiling with makeup and let's go. So I popped on a bald cap, which doubles as a representation of my mental health. And I'm going to start off by gluing down my brows and colour correcting. Also, disclaimer, like, none of my products are clean. I'm not a role model, only God can judge me, I don't want to hear it. Period. So you probably can't read the filth encrusted bottle, but to glue my brows down, I use Prosade Special Effects Adhesive. I got into using this product because Brooklyn Heights uses it, and she has really thick brows. And um, I know a lot of people use Elmer's, I am a profuse sweater. And it does not work for me. I do not need water soluble. I need fight me or die soluble. <laughs> so I poured just about half a lid's worth and I'm gonna use my finger just to smooth it through my brows and then use a filthy spoolie to coat it flat. Lay down those chicken strips. Fuck your chicken strips. <laughs> Go. Fuck your chicken strips. So once it's starting to dry off like this, you can then go around the perimeter with a wet wipe and just clean off the excess. So before I go in with any powders, I am just going over the brow again with some Prosade on my finger. This time I'm not going to use the mascara smoothie, I'm just going to use the warmth from my finger to smooth it all flat. Something else I really love about Prosade actually is that um, the drying time is so much quicker. Like I know with Elmer's a lot of people will sit there with like a blow dryer or whatnot, but Prosade is probably like completely dry within 30 seconds to a minute. And you know, I'm a girl on the go, I like a fast paced lifestyle, so even though it means you have to work a bit quicker with like cleaning up the excess and that, like I'm not mad about it, I'm not mad about it. So now as you can see, I'm going into the colour correcting while the second layer dries. I'm using the NYX liquid lipstick in the colour Orange County and I get really bad discoloration around my neck. I think it's just from years of not knowing how to shave properly as a person of colour. So I got really bad ingrown hairs. So I've got so much discoloration around my neck. So this really is a vital step for me in the process. Pooja, what is this behaviour? I'm also sticking a little bit under my eyes and not everyone has to do this, but I just have no sleep schedule. So I've always got dark circles. Then I'm gonna use this tiny little sponge just to blend out the orange. Oh my God, why can't you just take the freaking couple? Ah! Now I'm just gonna let the orange sit there for a moment while I do the last layer of prose with my finger. All you gotta do is walk away. So now that all the creams on my face are drying, I'm gonna go into it with some translucent powder. As a queen of colour, it's always been a concern to me that I don't look ashy when I use translucent powder, but one that always does me a good job is the RMCA No Colour Translucent Powder. Like, she gets black rights. She was at the protest. She gets it. <laughs> So I'm gonna use quite a heavy dose on my powder puff and just really beat it in to my brow to keep it flat. <laughs> now I'm gonna use the same powder all over my orange areas. And they were roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. So now that I've hit it all with powder and I'm looking like an extra from The Lion King on the West End, I'm gonna brush off the excess with a powder brush. She is a bitch. So now it's time for foundation and like many drag queen, I use the Krylon TV paint stick and mine is in the colour L-I-N. <laughs> that is not correct. Because according to the encyclopedia of... And blend. I don't really know why, but whenever I beat it around the rest of my face, it's completely fine. <laughs> um, but whenever I do it around my mouth, I always have to like smear it around because if I just bounce it, it like picks off the product. And I don't really know why. Um, so if you know, please let me know. So next I'm going to conceal all the high points of my face using the MAC Studio Finish Concealer in NW25. Are you going to hit me? Do you want it? I don't want it. you're asking for it. You're dying for it. Get off my back. Now blend it. Country boy, I love you. And now I'm going back to Krylon for my contour and then we're going to blend it. You can't sit with us. Actually, Megan, I can't sit anywhere. I have steroids. If you want to be a dog, you know. 
When it comes to blending my cream contour, I use the reverse side of the sponge, so you can kind of see it there. Um, so that way I can keep all the dark and the light separate until the end when I come back to the light side and then blend the dark and the light together. We've got a couple more steps of cream. Now I'm gonna go back into my concealer and undercut my contour. I find it quite jarring that some people don't like undercut their contour. Cause I'm like, go how am I making it lift, you know? And also when you watch Shag Race, if you see people like Candy Ho or like Cindy Lee Fontaine, you get red, that they've contoured and it looks like a beard. It's cause they didn't undercut it. That's it. That's it. I always cut my contour from the tip of my ear here. And that might seem a bit peculiar, but it's because often you're wearing a wig in that anyway, and your wig will hide that part of your like sideburn. So that way it will always look like it's actually coming out and like have a visible definition no matter like what sort of wig you're wearing. You know? Stop saying I look like Chicken Little. He's dumb and he's a coward. And I'm not a coward. Um, Jared, could you read number 23 for the class? And now I'm just gonna blend those downward toward my jaw. No, I cannot. What up, I'm Jared, I'm 19, and I never fucking learned how to read. Last part of the cream work, so I'm gonna go back in with my cream contour and cut my jawline. But, top tip, always cut your jaw with your mouth open. Like, I've made a mistake so many times of forgetting to do so, and then as soon as you go to like talk or like smile, the whole thing shifts and it just looks so wank. So, um, you'll look a bit of a knob being like, but honestly, it'll make a world of difference, I promise you. Wow, Loves it. Now, um, I've done my cream work, so I'm gonna go in and start setting all of my creams. I use translucent powder to set, but only on my contour areas, so like my cheeks, my forehead, and my jaw, my neck, and then I'll come to the next bit after. <clears throat> Make sure when you set this part that you get the top of your ear where you set the first bit of concealer, because otherwise it'll all just transfer into your wig and you don't want that, babe, you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm gonna brush off the excess. Controversial yet brave opinion. Um, I don't really let my makeup bake. I know it's like common makeup practice and I think it's quite strange that I don't do that. But I think it's because like I'm a working girl and I don't really enjoy just doing makeup for the sake of it. You know, she says doing a makeup tutorial. <laughs> but when I'm putting on a face, I'm on my way to a gig or a shoot or a booking. And like the prose thing, I've kind of just worked out the ways to do my makeup the quickest and most efficiently, knowing that it will stay set all night and knowing that I'll look lit. So um Find me about it. So now I'm gonna set all the places that I put my concealer with the Smashbox Halo powder. Hey, how much money do you have? Oh, like 69 cents. Uh, you know what that means. And with that same powder, I'm gonna take my powder puff and press it into my eyebrow where we put all the creams. So now I'm gonna be doing all of my contour. Um, I'm going in with the MAC Swiss Chocolate powder contour and just a nice little fluffy brush. And I'm gonna place it everywhere but my nose because we'll come back to my nose contour. A potato flew around my room before you Now blend my loves and it should blend a bit easier because since you just used the Smashbox Halo powder It should still have a little bit left on there so it helps marry the two colours together So for my nose contour there's kind of two separate steps So the first one I go in with this eyeshadow brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills and use that same powder contour And just do like a wider version of the contour all levels except physical, I am a wolf. What are those? So now I'm going in with this smaller blending brush. I'm just going to buff it all out on my nose. Who's the hottest Uber driver you've ever had? Um, I never went to Uber driver. I have two of these brushes. They're honestly my favorite makeup tool that I own. It's um, the NYX eyebrow brush. And I have one I use for my actual eyebrows and one I use for um, my nose contour. Do you know what I just do? Is I just like brush it in here a little bit to get some powder on it. And then I just go in and right at the closest part of the bridge and sharpen up the line. If there are any spirits here tonight, tell me, does this sound like Shakira? And now we've got like this clearly more defined line. We're gonna go back in with the blending brush. Yeah, as if I'm, if, 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 if I'm gonna let you use my- And now lastly with my nose, I'm gonna go back in with this halo powder and just soften up the edges where the contour meets the rest of my face so it doesn't look so wide. The amount of ugly faces you're gonna see me pull in this video, but you know, real beauties on the inside. So that's the bulk of my nose contour done. Um, we're gonna come back to it right at the very end, literally the last step we do. But um, for the moment, I think we can move on. Now we're gonna move on to my eye makeup, which is probably my favorite part of the whole process. And um, we're gonna do a nice little pink and blue two-tonal thing. It's gonna be gorge. So we're gonna start off by using the Alyssa Edwards Anastasia Beverly Hills palette and using this gorgeous pink here called Texas Made. 
Stop, stop, stop. Where? Hmm? Where's the bee? There's a bee? So firstly, as you can see, I'm placing this pink all in the inner corner of my eye up until about halfway and touching my eyebrow. I'm also going to tuck it just below my lash line in the inner corner. Ready to fucking die? No, I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. So rather than just get a new brush, I'm going to clean this one off on my little makeup rag. Then I'm going to dip into the Kimchi Chic X Naomi Smalls Two Queens One Desert Palette, which was a gorgeous little Christmas present from my housemate, lovely Jack. And then I'm going to use this colour here, Oasis. And I'm yet to use this colour, so you're going to get a real review right now. Um, okay, work, work. I'm, I'm into it, I'm into it. So firstly, as you can see, I'm just packing this colour on in like a circular shape. Um, I'll make it look a lot nicer in a minute, don't worry, darling. If your name is Junior and you're really handsome, come on, raise your hand. So the shape I'm kind of going for right now, I'm kind of keeping it relatively circular, but just leaving a little bit of like a wing point. Um, I'm not really sort of queen who does like big wings, or, like severe shapes in that way. So I'm kind of just like leaving it quite round and like open, but just with a slight point to give it a little bit of a snatch go. Barbecue sauce on my titties. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the rough sort of shape we're working with, but it's all gonna get cleaned up. I'm gonna go in with this dark blue in the Alyssa Edwards palette again called Dream It. And I'm just placing this in the crease and the corner of where Oasis is sitting just to create some depth. Hey, I'm gonna fucking rip your face off, bitch. Something I would definitely say about this blue though is that it is such a victim of oxidization. I always find that like I put it on as this really like rich true blue and you'll probably see it as the video continues. It just changes and becomes like this kind of navy-ish black. And like, I'm not mad at it. I like the colour it becomes, but also like, it would be nice if it was the colour that it matched in the palette, you know what I mean? Also getting the smaller brush and tapping into Dream It and just touching it under the outer portion of my lash line. So I want the two colours like married together in the middle. I just don't want it as thick as it was in the pink. So now I'm going to clean off that brush again, the big one, rather than just get a new brush. And then dip back into the pink and start to marry these two colours together in the middle. That what he calls it. And to be fair, you don't really have to worry too much about the blending portion of this middle section because when you cut your crease anyway with white, um, it's all going to disappear anyway. But I think it's just for my own peace of mind so I can feel like a pro. <laughs> so I got a notification that stopped the filming, which I didn't even realise. But now I'm cutting out the whites on my eyes using he who shall not be named. Um, and this is why I mentioned earlier, you don't have to worry too intensely about the blending of this whole area. Because as soon as you cut it out, um, it all just kind of disappears. Just going over it with the white, I do two layers of this. Um, so you're watching the second layer, good thing I caught it. And then I just buff it out with my finger because I'm gonna mattify this all with shadows anyway. So it won't even be visible. And then I'm also gonna tuck in just under my eye here. So drag it in and then pull it along my lash line. Which is what's gonna really open up my eye and change the entire shape of my face. High key though guys, if you have any good recommendations for a white dupe, please tell me. In 2021, I do not want to have to buy any more of J-Star's products ever. And this is the only thing I use of him left, but I just find it really hard to find a really good dupe for it. Like I've tried the NYX one, I didn't really like the consistency. I tried um, Kat Von D and stuff like that. And I just, I don't want my makeup to suffer by getting a different product. So um, if you can recommend an excellent dupe, I will be forever in your debt. It's freaking bats. I can not like a bug right now, I do not think that so I'm going to give that white lipstick a chance to just dry and mattify a bit. So I'm going to go into my brows. As I mentioned earlier, I have two of these brow brushes. And the reason I have two is because obviously one I use like brow pomade on. So I don't really want the two products getting mixed. It just makes it a bit more difficult when it comes to doing my nose contour and like keeping everything clean. So that's why I go into the other one. So I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in the colour Granite. And I'm just going to go out and mark up my brows. Me. Whenever I do this sort of eye shape with the wing section, I tend to bring my brow directly up. Whereas if I'm going for like the rounder shape, I do bring it back down on the curve. But yeah, I'm giving you severity tonight, not real this. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So now I've drawn out the basic shape, I'm just filling them with pomade. As per every drag queen ever, my brows aren't even, but um, they're beautiful in their own way. So now I'm going to go in with a black eyeshadow and set my eyebrows. Um, I'm interested to try this new black. It's called Soot Yourself um, from the Kimchi and Naomi Swords palette. Um, yeah, so you should just get a little eyeshadow brush and pat it into my brow. Um, is this opaque? It kind of. I can be a piece of that, yeah. Ah, 
Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! So for the thicker part of the brow, I use a brush. But then I go back into the eyebrow brush from before to do the tail ends, just so I can get like a cleaner finish. You just drop in and just smack the lip. And then as you can see, I've done on the other eye. I'm just gonna tap in some nice little individual brow hairs to create a nicer natural ombre at the start of the brow. Lastly, we're gonna conceal our eyebrow using the alternate eyebrow brush that we did our nose contour with. Hurricane Katrina! We're like Hurricane Tortilla! The last part of a tamous eyebrow, we need an eyebrow slit or two or three. And there are two main reasons I do this. So all I do to get them is just the same eyebrow brush and concealer and just swipe through it. And I think one reason I love them is because I love like the hardness of it. I think I always admired them when I was growing up. I never wanted to give myself one because I think it would probably come with a little bit of a stigma being like a tall black man with eyebrow slits. I think it makes you just look a bit thuggish. So I think in drag, like putting that like it hardness on the femininity of it all is really gorgeous to me. But the other reason I love them is because when you cut your brows, the slits, it creates a negative space. So when someone looks at your eyebrows, they're immediately drawn to the slits in your eyebrows and not to the shape of the eyebrows. So if they're even or not, you're not looking at that, you're looking at the gap in my eyebrow, which that is a makeup tip. That is illusion work. Row, row, row. So as my brow is done, um, you may see a little bit of discoloration where the pomade is mixed with the concealer. I'm gonna fix that at the very end, so don't you worry, my honeys. So now we're coming back to our eyes. We let them set for a little while, and then even though it's a gorgeous pinky colour, I want it matte white. So we're gonna go into the Sugar Peel Pro um, eyeshadow. I believe the colour's called Taco, but it's just too filthy to read. But I will find out whether or not it's called Taco. So I'm just grabbing this nice little brush, um, which I only use for the white, because I don't want it getting polluted, and mattifying all the concealer space. Road work ahead. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. And now I've added the white, look how dramatically it changes my makeup, but oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. So we could just leave it white and blend the white into the outer colour here. But um, I'm a diva and where's the diva in that? So now I'm going to go back into the Kim Chino Resource Palette and try out this colour here called Campfire Kindling, this gorgeous glitter pink. And plop that just on the crease. Hmm. Okay, I'm trying to be real with y'all. I'm not loving that pigmentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spray it with a little bit of a setting spray because it's clearly got some glitter in it. And... Okay, that's making a world of difference, yeah. I think this colour is a tiny bit sheer, and I'm not mad about it, because it's only going on top of the white, so it's going to look pigmented anyway. But I would maybe even advise putting, like, another pink down, like this one, underneath. Um, just give it more zhuzh, but I'm not doing that. Fuck it. What you gonna do? So now I've put down this pink, and it's looking stun. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the white, and just blend the two seams of the pink and the white together. And just for an extra bit of zhuzh, I'm going to go back into Alyssa Edwards in this colour here, Beyond, the darker pink, and tuck it just on the outer corner to marry the two depths of these tones together. And, oh my god, oh my god! So what you've now should have created is this, like, inverted moment where the pink starts on the outside and blends into the blue, but as it transitions here, the pink and the inner part starts my mind, oh, gay culture. Trans rights, trans rights. So we're starting to cut to our last few steps. So now I'm gonna line my eyes. Um, this is from NYX, it's the Epic Ink Liner. I'm just going in, um, another little top tip I do. I'm gonna do my liner up until where the white begins and I'm gonna do something else. So I'm just gonna line the top of my lid. So I've jumped ahead and done it on this side just so I can show you. But I'm not the greatest with liner because I find it often like bleeds into the white area. So what I've done is I've gotten that same brow hair brush from earlier and dipped into a black eyeshadow. And we're just gonna run it along the inner corner because as long as it's a matte eyeshadow, it mirrors the eyeliner anyway. And especially you're gonna be having it under lashes anyhow. So I just think it gives you a greater ease of control. I'm gonna pop on some mascara. I'm using NYX Worth The Hype. Um, why am I? <laughs> I'm also just touching a tiny bit of mascara on the bottom lashes on the outside because what I'll do is if I leave the lashes on the inside white, it will further this white eye illusion. 
One of my favourite new parts of makeup is freckles. Like, I am so into them. And it took me a real while to get a hang of them because they always just kind of look like blackheads when I did them. But here's how I do mine. So using that same eyeliner I used before, I'm just going to dot a load around my face. I'm going to do two layers of these. So do just the first layer. And what I've learned is more really is more. I think the less you do, the less authentic they look. They kind of look like cat whiskers you've drawn on for Halloween or something. So just don't be afraid to go ham with these. Hi, my name is Derek. Welcome to Pizza Five. Let me guess, pizza. And the more variation in like size and spacing and that you give them, just the better they'll look. So have fun with them, girls. Have fun with them. So this is the first layer of freckles and these are kind of like the finished mug. Um, I'm going to set my makeup and then there's a couple of little steps I do after I set my makeup, which kind of seems like it defeats the point because why am I setting it then? But um, I'm just crazy like that, Rar XD. So um, let me set my mug. So now I'm going to set my face and what I've pertained, this is a very old school trick. I would not recommend to a friend because it's awful for your skin. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to use a Got To Be Glue, the setting spray for screaming hold because this mug can't go anywhere. So I'm just gonna hold my face back so I don't have <laughs> grease it all and spray away. I got a new thing called Frisha, free, free Shavaka do. So even though the hairspray locked it all in, I don't look like this sheeny. So I'm gonna go back in with some translucent powder and just start it all around. And make sure you go over your T-zone because not only will you probably still get oily, but also what I'm doing with this is I'm also diluting the freckles I did earlier so they're not as like pigmented. So when you go in your second layer, there'll be like a depth and different uh, tones and like strengths of the pigment that you've done your freckles in. If that makes any sense, I'm literally just chatting shit. Just lately I haven't been able to think straight. Ball. Two guys hold yeah. Now I'm brushing away the excess and something I've just realized that I never explained. I don't really wear blush and I think it's mostly just cause A, I've never really found the colour I like, and I think maybe I haven't tried enough blush. Because my makeup has gotten significantly better since when I was last trying blush. But also, I just find that maybe I've been conditioned by the makeup industry to think blush isn't for me as a personal colour, because I wouldn't have rosy cheeks. Uh, which is sad but true. So now I've powdered that area, I'm going to do another layer of freckles. It's going to really strengthen all the pigment and give them like complexity and depth. And also, I know that I'm using a black liner because I've seen I'm on colour, so my freckles would be darker. But if you're not Caucasian or lighter skinned, you probably you could probably still use like a brown liner, or even like some cream contour I've seen people use. But um, yeah, find yourself, girl, find yourself. Ah, that was legitness. Yeah, it was. So I popped on all my freckles, and um, I'm in love. And I'm gonna do a nice little mole on my chin. So now we've done that, I'm just going to use a little bit of setting spray because I want to return some of the moisture to my skin that I've cancelled out through hairspray and powder. What the fuck, Richard? So now we're coming to the holy grail of my makeup, my favourite part by far, which is the Urban Decay Glitter Liner in the colour gold, I think. It's gold, it's gold. <laughs> So this has two purposes in my makeup. The first is as an under brow highlight, which is what I also said would distract from any colour discoloration we've got up here. And also I put it down the centre of my nose as my nose highlight, because it just really snatches in the light and like creates a perfect illusion. Gaga said it, a perfect illusion. So I'm gonna put it on now, to tell me if you think it's worth the hype. Hey, I'm lesbian. I thought you were American. And boom, like, oh, I just think the way it like sets everything off, like lifts the brows, snatches in my skinny nose. Can't breathe, so skinny. Oh, I haven't got COVID, I'm not short of breath. I just, so skinny. <laughs> I just think, I think it's a serve. I think it's a serve. So now all I have left is lips and lashes, which, you know, is what I usually wear anyway. So, um, and so to glue on my lashes, I'm going to use Weave Glue, Black Girl Heritage. And these are my lashes, they're only little. But I remember I was on a FaceTime with Dakota Schiffer, oh, tag her or something, while she was getting ready. And she was wearing these lashes and she was like, oh no, I need to put on smaller lashes. And at the time I was like, smaller lashes? But now I'm so into the small lash fantasy. I think it's the only way to like, look like a demure woman. And you know, I don't do drag, I do realness, mama, realness. So I'm gonna plop these on. Uh... I mean, those are kind of alright. Those are alright. I'm happy with that. So now I'm just using a bit of mascara to blend my real lashes and my falsies. And I think I really like using smaller lashes because I hate doing like loads of detail work behind the lash and then it all just disappearing. But I feel like with these, because they're quite small, you can still see everything I put 
I've spent how long in this bloody tutorial doing? Now I'm gonna line my lips with this one from MUA Cosmetics. Um, <laughs> I can't find the sharpener, so I'm using the nub. Godspeed. Uh, oh no, it'll work, it'll work, girls. It has to be a joke, I do not believe this is happening. I'm literally about to fucking kill myself and I'm not kidding. So I've just buffed out the lip liner with this little metallic with so I've just puffed out my lips using this metallic liquid lip from NYX and now I'm going to finish it off with this gorgeous plumping lip gloss from NYX as well. She's fanatic man. <laughs> and this is the finish mug! I feel gorge. Like this lip, this eye, these freckle, French freckles. Um, I feel it girl. So while you're on Tucky Interior Illusions Lounge, I'm gonna go put on some drags and I'll be back in three, two, one. And this is the finished look. And bitch, I am serving. I am giving you fuchsia Africana. I'm giving you hair. I'm giving you Caribbean prints and stick transfer money to a bank account in UK. I am, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. So if you have made it to the end of this tutorial, thank you so much for watching. And if you just skip to the end to find out what I look like at the end, you're a piece of shit. But we vibe anyway. We vibe. Period. Also, my honeys, well done. Not only for making it through the shit tutorial, but also for surviving 2020. We are all gonna kill it in 2021. Here's to queer artists, here's to our allies, here's to just being sickening, bitch. Thank you for supporting everything I do. I am Terrace Mongardi, your plus size black Barbie. Catch me in 2021 for Drag Race Reviews with Daphne, for my EP, Baddie, for my Wonder Woman show, McSecrets, Confession of a Nugget Queen. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye!